Prior to 1983, I first born this country, they are British. Mm -hmm. The law changed, actually, in 1981, nationality act changed that. Yeah. If Is that one of those secret laws that just keep passing through? I don't <laughs> know. It, 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 there it, are these no, regulations that no, no, keep no, coming no, every day. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no secret law, obviously. We know yeah. about it, they can't be secret. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah, of people yeah, 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 yeah. If a person born this country mm -hmm. and never registered as a Jamaican citizen, they have the right of residence in this country. Yeah. And there is no way the Jamaican authority can issue them with a travel document or a passport mm -hmm. because effectively they're not Jamaican citizen. Mm -hmm. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Come hear Courtney's plans for the future of Victoria Mutual in the UK. Get updates on Jamaica and share your concerns about the current state of affairs. Meet other members of the leadership and property services team from Jamaica, including the Chairman of Victoria Mutual, Michael McMorris. Friday, June 16th, Unity Centre, NW10. Thursday, June 22nd, at Tottenham Town Hall and Friday. Friday, June 23rd at the Kia Oval. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission is free. Call 0208 801 6777 to confirm your attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. I've got Ventress Henry again, and uh, we spoke about last week the whole issue of EU and the immigration, touch a bit on Brexit, and also a bit on statelessness of children born in the UK. Can you believe that? A child stateless is born in the UK. But nevertheless, this week we're going to double in a bit more into other issues about immigration, deportation, and, uh, and some more key information that people can actually use to be more informed. Vendris, welcome again, sir. Thank you. Good, good, good. Glad that you didn't run away to <laughs> some immigration, because people are always calling, you know what I mean? <laughs> do, you, do, do you have your phone on? Like in the weekend, if somebody like he's going to definitely, be I mean, removed. you're a lawyer 24 7. You, know, you yes. can't be a lawyer just for five days a week, yes. or between actually eight yes. or between 10 and six. Yes, you know, your lawyer is at 24 7. Yes, seven days a week, always on call, we whether you like it or not. We people are picking your brain. What is it? We are here to help, we are mm. to actually educate mm. and inform and to help mm. in any way we can. Mm. And um, the worst thing can happen as a lawyer, yes, your client called, you know, they're in trouble, yes. I don't answer, yes. Okay. Sometimes I'm guilty of not answering as promptly as I, as I should. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I mean, you know, we try to actually do our best. Obviously. Yes, yes. It, it's important, and, and again, it's a, it's a labor of love at the same time, isn't it? To do this job, you have to love it. To yeah. be honest with you, you have yeah. to get some satisfaction by helping people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as person, you know, I, I'm into the childcare bit and child childcare legal, and uh, it is something that even on weekends, sometimes you are thinking about a particular case. I think that's more stressful. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, yeah, that's you, more, that's definitely yeah more you, you, you have to have a heart for children and love children you, you to, to do that to, really, you know, yes. because when you think about the whole aspect about the paramount interest is that child and everything is to make sure that child is well and is good and yeah. fit the threshold. Okay, good. But anyhow, um, back to last week's conversation. Um, and let's look at this now. Do you actually think immigration will just stop? You know, are there better policies, laws that can be written or put in place instead of this blanket rule? The main question here is, is immigration the root cause? Will the patient be cured when you stop immigration completely? Or are there other causes to the symptom we are seeing? I mean, people always ask, oh, this immigration thing, people fear going down. Listen, I can tell you this for myself before we go any further. I used to go to the home office um, when I first came. I few years after I came and I used to line up at Luna House, you know what I mean, early in the morning. I, like to, I used to like to go there like six o'clock early to be first in the queue because I never liked sending in application. I like them to see me face to face, mm -hmm. you know. And it was sometimes a very dread moment at times, you know, when you wait, you know, for that visa, you know. Immigration, will it stop or will it continue? Well, it's been reduced. I can't tell that much. Immigration has been reduced. It's been reduced uh, over a couple of years now. Yes. We are... It's been restrictive. Yes. You know, you have visa requirement for people from the Jamaica. So not a lot of people coming from Jamaica as visitors. So mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the influx of immigrants, I mean, dwindling, yes. reducing, you know, drastically over yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. So to st stop permanently, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But it will actually take a different shape. Mm 
yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, you have a diff different type of immigrants mm -hmm. coming through. I don't know if it benefits, like, benefits the Caribbean as much. Because what happened over, uh, over the last few years is this. Most immigrants are from actually a low-income group yes. from the Caribbean. And they come here actually to, um, to help build this country, yes. but also to, to contribute mm -hmm. to development of their own communities in Jamaica. Yes. Yes. If they change the requirement and they want more skilled people to come from Jamaica, then you'll see a brain drain from, the, far, Caribbean. from the Caribbean to the UK. So it's have actually, um, to me, adverse effect. So at the same time, and, and this is the balance in that Avengers, because it will create the brain drain from Jamaica. But then at the same time, policies or some government ministers in the Caribbean sometimes speak about where they can bring back remittance. Because what, what, what is one of the thinking is that a lot of first, second generation Jamaicans or whatever like that, uh, they've gone back home or they die. The, the third, fourth generation are not so much linked to the Caribbean or Jamaica, for argument's sake, it's used a country. So the level of remittance going back is not as much as before. So when you got people now exporting, countries exporting professionals, medical people, doctors, teachers, the view is that remittance goes back to the Caribbean. Well, you need more than that to actually develop a country. You know, yeah. you need actually, I know. You, 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 know, <laughs> you need to keep your best, you know, you need to keep actually your best, yes. you know. Um, you know, if you have your best brains in Jamaica, yes. obviously Jamaica will actually prosper yes. um, at a faster rate. Yes. Okay, we we'll actually industrial commerce, you know, technology. Mm -hmm. We need those things, you yes. know, to develop the country. So it's good to actually to export people. Yes. You know, to actually remit back money back to Jamaica. That's mm -hmm. fine. And mm -hmm. you know, we, we need that obviously. All we have is tourism and we need people to actually to when we export people, it's more than just the money. Yes. It's saying, okay, we actually ambassadors of Jamaica. Yes. You know, so we are Jamaica as far as we are concerned. Mm -hmm. And sometimes by meeting us, they can say, Listen, I mean, you know, where are you from? I'm from yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's okay. And yeah. then obviously, they might also want to go to Jamaica, mm. you know, to, to have a taste of Jamaica. So, mm. um, it, all well and good. But I mean, I think to develop a country, obviously, for every country needs actually its best. Yes. You know, I mean, it wouldn't be as, as good as we are, or as popular as we are without Usain Bolt. Yes. If we yes. migrated to the, 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 the US mm. and run under the US banner, US yes. flag. So, I mean, because of Usain, people mm. come to know Jamaica yes. and see him as actually, a, as, you know, obviously, he's a, ta he's a taste of Jamaica. Yes, yes. He actually, um, symbolized him, but actually everything that's good about mm. Jamaica. And, 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 and obviously, yeah. you know. And also, we, we uh, condolence as well to Jermaine Mason, Definitely, um, obviously, who passed away. So he was also an ambassador for Jamaica, even though he started to run f um, for the, for for the, the UK. UK. Oh, but, but also, you know, so... I don't see you in family. Yeah, rest in peace in for family. that, you know. Because they're all ambassadors. I mean, these guys really do so well. And I mean, so many people now. I remember I saw one of the British athletes in Jamaica um, in a hotel one time, actually training in Jamaica. Since Uguru or something like that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. She was in Jamaica with, with, yeah. with um, Usain Bolt team. So people are going to Jamaica. So yes. therefore, Jamaica is bringing in immigrants, uh, sports Ooh, immigrants. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, um, yeah, we're known for that over the years. You know, but listen, Ventures, now I'm thinking now, if the Brexit factor now is having an impact by um, restricting EU nationals who used to have easy sale eventually in two, three years on the basis that Brexit goes, on the basis that Theresa May win the election, on the basis that no one um, else win like, and, and change up the whole thing, if the British, the EU nationals now have to get visas or whatever to come to the UK, Commonwealth nationals, aren't they now going to be on the same level, if anything? Jamaicans are going to be on the same, except for geography. No, 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 no. Yeah. With, with, with visa, with yeah. a visa requirement of it, it's based on the strength of a part of the country. Yes. Okay, you see they go to China. This government actually go to, um, saying actually I'm entering out to China. Yeah. Capitan to, to, to make it uh, to facilitate the visa process yes, for yes. the Chinese. Yes, okay, yes. Because Chinese actually, I mean, um, they, they come to this country, they invest heavily in this country, mm -hmm. and they spend money. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we need actually the Chinese money. Yes, yes. Well, for Jamaica, it's a bit different. Yes. You know, I don't think we'll go Capitan to, to, to facilitate, to make actually visa requirement easier for Jamaicans. Yeah. So again, it depends on the strength of the country. You know, mm -hmm. the, the UK has a powerful land um, at this point in time. The people, the well-to-do people in Jamaica, they won't have a problem getting the visa. Yes. What they're trying to do is this. They want to limit, you know, 
to, as far as I'm concerned, of it, people from the low-income group. Would they don't make necessarily the, 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 um, the skilled people. Yes. You know, or they actually, I mean, uh, the more affluent Jamaicans. Those who have ties, if yeah, anything, from this country, ties, from yeah. this country. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's the people in the low-income group who they believe, obviously, would actually find that actually are what they're saying is more than likely mm -hmm. if they come to this country, obviously, and they'll find mm -hmm. that actually, I mean, life, lifestyle, mm -hmm. life would be better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this country, in Jamaica, and therefore maybe we want us to stay or, or, or whatever. Um, yeah. So therefore, we're looking at um, the next few years, a lot of realignment, alignment, or whatever regarding immigration. It's going to be a very top key area for the next few years, isn't it? It, it will, and it won't happen overnight. I think, yeah. obviously, um, you won't see actually the effect of Brexit yes. or, or these actually draconian policies until next actually five, six, even ten years yes. down the road, you'll see it. Because I think this government banking that actually the student coming through will actually, yeah. I mean, fill actually whatever <coughs> mm -hmm. um, gap, you know, um, for skill work, you know. Mm. I don't see it. I, I, yeah. I don't. Because obviously um, this generation, okay, they won't they won't do certain jobs, you know. Yeah. I have a daughter, she's 21 years old, I'm mean, uh, going to university. Mm -hmm. You still need actually people to do certain jobs. Yeah, yeah. And actually, the, the UK, I mean, the, the, the UK citizens mm -hmm. obviously used to have a certain lifestyle. Yes. Okay? And sometimes the, 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 the um, remuneration for certain jobs kind of fall in that part of lifestyle. Yes, yes. Okay? And that's the, the immigrants, I mean, to me, they fill that part of their gap wow. in, the, in the market. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's very interesting. So, so let's, let's go back now to another point which I want to tap into. Um, uh, the deportation bit, which has been in the news a lot and uh, affecting British families, one partner, go back to the Caribbean. Based on your experience, tell us the other side of the deport. Okay, that person's gone to Jamaica. That person has been gone back to some other country. The family diverse, the, the, family, the family dynamics there. What are some of the other key issues there? When you put actually a person to Jamaica, mm. you know, you don't all actually, it's not only about the person, you put to Jamaica. Yeah. You know, it's about actually the effect. Yes. And British citizens as well, mm. on the whole. Mm. This deportee, this actually person deport, uh, uh, deport to Jamaica, mm. normally has sometimes wife mm. or husband and children mm. present and settled in the UK. Yes. That's the problem. So, for instance, you deport actually um, a young man from the UK yes. to Jamaica. Yes. Because he was convicted and sent to prison for a year, for a year or so. Mm -hmm. That person actually probably leave actually two or three children mm -hmm. and a partner or a wife. The wife now is a single parent. Yes. And the children are fatherless. Mm -hmm. Maybe actually perform actually a very fundamental role in the family sphere, mm -hmm. where you probably take the children to school. Probably, yeah. and sometimes he can even be the primary carer because probably wife have to work. Exactly. Okay. So when this person is deported, you can't for life of me say to me, obviously, these children won't suffer irreversible harm. Mm. Because I can't say the children's mother won't suffer as a result. Yeah. Because she'll lose, actually, I mean, the support of the other parent. And also, that particular person who's been deported could have actually being a taxpayer as well in the system? Well, yes, but it's more than that. I, th it, than it, that yeah. I think it's deeper because obviously I mean, mm. the position does affect only that person. Yeah. It affects actually, I mean, um, not only actually like the wife or the mm. husband, the partner, mm. but it affects the mm. children as well. And it, it, this can actually be a, a lifeline scar than children. It can affect them permanently. Mm. You know, I, I can see where you're coming from and, I'm, I, and, and this is very powerful here because you're trying to build a society and strengthen families. And at the same time, you got to, it's like weighing up now and say, okay, to send that person out of the equation, let's think of it now. He's got three young men. So for instance, they've got three young child, three young men, like boys for argument's sake. He's a firm father. Okay, things wrong immigration-wise. Take him out of the equation now, left alone with a mother now who is working hard. So it messes up society, isn't it? Dangerous. We have to address first, obviously, the reason for deportation. Mm. You know, that's that's very important, obviously. Yeah. It's not about any, any conducive to public good. Yes. Or security risk. If you want to actually to assess a person, mm. you know, um, as far as actually I mean, um, real is concerned, 
you can actually go through a social service or go to a probation, the probation service. Mm -hmm. You know, the risk of reoffending is it actually um, high, low, medium? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, the probation is automatic. Mm. If you send us a 12 months, it's no automatic. So nothing to do with public good. I can't use the public as good. Mm. Nothing to do with that, okay? It's like actually, um, you've been sentenced. Mm. You should have a sentence, obviously. It's actually, to me, is a <coughs> second sentence. Yes, yes. It's a second punishment, mm -hmm. okay? You come to serious offense, okay? Obviously, now you lose your family. Yes. Lose actually a support network. Mm -hmm. Whenever a person from this country, if you're not a British citizen, and they have any sort of leave to remain. Yes. It's conditional. Even if it's remain, it's conditional. Yes. That obviously you abide by UK law mm -hmm. and the state of trouble. Right. And I must implore people, I must, I must actually, I mean, um, yes. Yes. stress that a bit. Mm -hmm. Every leave to remain, if you're not a British citizen, is conditional that you behave yourself and abide by UK law. If not, if you're convicted, mm -hmm. and you don't have to go to prison for 12 months, you know. Yeah. If they believe actually, you know, um, you are a person who has no respect for UK law, mm -hmm. you know, have a few convictions, although, you know, you did, did no imprisonment, yes. or even if you're in the wrong company, yes. and they believe a person that can conduce the public good, they can still actually right. try to deport from the UK. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back on this particular point. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and come right back um, as we speak to Vendries about this and the impact also of the general election in the next um, break. Thank you. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Come hear Courtney's plans for the future of Victoria Mutual in the UK. Get updates on Jamaica and share your concerns about the current state of affairs. Meet other members of the leadership and property services team from Jamaica, including the Chairman of Victoria Mutual, Michael McMorris. Friday, June 16th, Unity Centre, NW10. Thursday, June 22nd at Tottenham Town Hall and and Friday, June 23rd at the Kia Oval. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission is free. Call 0208 801 6777 to confirm your attendance. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just coming back and uh, I just want to really um, get back into the, and, and close off that deportation bit. Um, Benjus, yes, so we were on that deportation bit and you addressed the audience as to the importance of um, behaving yourself. Yes, definitely. What, 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 would you, what would we say some of the, sometimes you've got tough love, what would you say are some of the key tough love words that you share with the community, for argument's sake? My main issue, my, my primary problem um, mm. with the potation, and it, what actually, what I, I think actually what, um, really upset me about anything else, and mm. why this law is so unfair, is to do with actually children that came here at a very, very young age. Mm. And these people obviously adapt the British way of life and the British mentality. Mm. And they grow up, they go to the same school with their friends, with their neighbors, who are, who are themselves British, mm. and they believe the ideology, you know, and the customer thing, and they, they essentially believe, obviously, they are British. Yes. They, they, um, they have literally no ties with mm. Jamaica. Mm. They came here so young. And sometimes they get themselves in trouble, and then they face the actual reality where they actually face deportation mm -hmm. back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. By this time, for example, that young man is a Jamaican, obviously, like telling him actually Spanish because mm -hmm. he has no, no tie, no affiliation, nothing with Jamaica, to do with mm -hmm. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But I believe sometimes, actually, I think the parents need to actually instill with these youngsters say, listen, I mean, um, yes. Um, you, you might be friends with this person, obviously. They are British, and you, know, you might feel that you're British as well. Mm -hmm. but just ensure that they walk a more narrow, stringent line. Yes. Because <clears throat> the repercussion of a mistake by them yes. a far reaching effect. Yeah. Like seeing from, from them. So, so yeah. most of us is actually the youngsters, young men, came to this country at an early age, you know, get them in trouble mm -hmm. and offer deportation to a country that's alien to them, yeah. which is Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah. That's what affects me more than anything else. And sometimes they go down there and they do not have that support network and they're a cripple. Yes, yeah, definitely. The most of when they come from prison, that's where they need a family more than anything else. Yes. When we just come from prison, obviously, you need a family support. Last thing you want is yes. to be Last thing isolated. Last thing isolated from them. And then you go to a country, obviously, where you, have, you don't have this support. Mm. You are yourself, obviously, I mean, very confused, mm. very um, depressed, mm. okay? And then 
Anything can happen, you know. Have you heard of any cases, and I've heard some ripple around, but have you heard of any cases where a person has been deported, um, have no family ties or whatever, and as a result of that, they suffer maybe some harm or death or whatever like that? I've, I know a particular case, obviously, where um, this young man was actually deported from this country. Mm -hmm. We made application to the, the Home Office to say, listen, his life was in danger. Mm -hmm. This was, this is a murder case that I, that, that I did. Mm -hmm. And um, murder took place, it was actually a um, family warfare. Mm -hmm. And there was actually proof members of the family had been killed in Jamaica mm -hmm. and in this country. Yeah. This young man was facing deportation, and we said to the Home Officer, listen, if this young man go back to Jamaica, he will definitely be killed. Mm -hmm. He was deported back to Jamaica. And this man wasn't, even, wasn't merely killed, he was tortured. His eyes were plucked out. Wow. His tongue was actually cut, um, was cut out really. Mm. And I think until obviously it was actually a gruesome, painful death. Wow. So, um, but that's actually, I mean, like an extreme, that's, a, that's an extreme case, but yes. I mean, it's more than that. Yes. If a person deported from this country, if it came at, a, if it came at an early age, without the network, the support network in Jamaica, mm. just come from prison, and if they're very vulnerable, mm. and they actually end up in the wrong group in Jamaica, mm you know, then they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Jamaica is actually in trouble as well because right. we don't have resources to offer mm -hmm. the much industrial support and rehabilitation that this, this young man need. Yes. Okay? So not just the young man going back to Jamaica is my problem. We as a country, a small country, don't have resources to actually to rehabilitate the person. And that's you why know? you've got to think some charities or some different social enterprises. But I, I don't think no, they're doing enough. They're not doing I, enough. I, Are they lacking resources, if anything? They don't have resources to actually do what, what this young man needs. Mm. You know? what, most of the time, what a young man does is his family around him to put on everyone and say, listen, I mean, this is the way forward. Wow. That's what he needs support. Wow. So, okay. So, w one other question that uh, people always ask Are there really, and I said it already, you're going to laugh, are there some secret planes? That's moving out. I mean, I always, I heard about two last one, and it was out there. Um, but are there other secret planes? Let's, let's destroy the myth. But well, I, I say this. I say this. Most time, if you are deported, mm. um, you, you're bailed, or you actually granted temporary admission. Yes. And uh, we condition you sign on at some actually um, centers. Mm -hmm. And if people, you know knew in advance, you know, that actually, I mean, you would have a removal, a flight, a mm. shuttle flight to Jamaica mm. or wherever. Sometimes they'll be a bit more reluctant to go and sign on. Yes, yes. So what I don't understand to do is actually ensure that actually uh, they, they make actually, uh, you know, at the uh, um, latest as possible, mm. yeah. you know, for the information to come out and say there's a shuttle flight mm. going back to Jamaica. So it doesn't really publicize. Yes. But I won't say it's secret. Yes, yes. But it actually come uh, every publicized, say, listen, I'm this plane going back at a particular date. But let me, I'd say this about deportation is this. i say something else about deportation. And this is to educate people, to mm -hmm. advise them, especially mm -hmm. um, some mm -hmm. recent entitlement. If a person is sentenced to 12 months mm -hmm. or more, they face automatic deportation. Yeah. So a change from actually, you're not, be, uh, you're not actually, I mean, um, initially, you know, if they think you're not conducive to public good, then they process the deportation. That's what initial, actually, I mean, argument you know, obviously an initial law. Mm -hmm. No, if you get 12 months sentence or more, you know, it's, that's automatic deportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can also, you can fight deportation, obviously. They'll, they, they serve a documentation, say, documentation to say you should actually say it reason they should consider. Yeah, yeah. You know, when make a decision to deport you. Mm -hmm. This is very important because it's when you make actually that representation you know, that will consider actually your human rights. Right. And you only can get a right of appeal, in country right of appeal, if actually the case is strong. Mm -hmm. If you have children, mm -hmm. if you have a wife, if you live here illegally for a period of time, these are uh, the factors they consider. Yeah. For instance, if you have a, a relationship, you know, relationship when when, when you actually have stay. Yes, actually, I mean, it, was, it, was, it has to be based on you being here lawfully. Mm -hmm. I have actually a relationship with a British person. You can use that. Mm -hmm. If you can show that actually, I mean, if you should go, if you leave this country and go back, she will suffer, it will be harsh on the, on the person you're leaving behind. Mm 
-hmm. and it would be hard for her to come with you as well. Right, right. right. And really harsh, you know, on her if you should leave this country, mm -hmm. and be really harsh for her to accompany you back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Same thing with children. If you ensure it to be really harsh for them to accompany you back to Jamaica, mm -hmm. uh, for you to leave them here, they can actually make a, make a case out to say you want to stay here with the children. If you get four years or more, mm -hmm. you have to show it and do the ash, but as I've shown you, your, your situation is exceptional. So it's doubly and do the ash. You not only have to show it and do the ash, you also have to show mm -hmm. that your case is exceptional. And that's the key factor, the that's, exceptional. That's if you get four years or more. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if a person gets sent to 12 years or more, 12, 12, four years or more, it's, a, it's more likely what they are saying. You'll be, you, you know, what they are saying is more likely you face deportation. Right, right. Okay? It's very so, interesting. Yeah, it's okay. very interesting. And I, under four years or so, yeah. I mean, it's easier. It, it, if, if, if it goes further than that as well, because what mm -hmm. happens is this. Most times, if they don't believe, you know, you have a strong human rights claim, mm -hmm. In terms of actually, I'm um, family in this country, mm -hmm. or private life, you lend a president, lawful resident in this country. Mm -hmm. They give you an out of country right of appeal. Mm -hmm. So you can't appeal whilst you're in the UK. Right. You can only appeal when you leave the UK. And that is what they want you to do. And that's where you got link agencies or link lawyers yeah. back in the Caribbean. So that's why you have to make sure when they make the initial representation to the Home Office, yeah. where they ask you, mm -hmm. is there anything you want us to know in relation to actually your deportation? Right. You need to make actually a um, serious solicitor or get some advice. Mm -hmm. I make sure you make the best possible human rights case you can possibly make. Right. Okay. Well, and people can always get hold of you, isn't it? Well, but myself, obviously, or any other reputable solicitor they can okay. find. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll put um, the details of Ventures Henry and his firm on the, on the website as well, so you can check that out. Now, Ventures, one last thing before we go. Um, and that was very, really good. I mean, it's like uh, we need three more shows to deal with this. <laughs> what, what do you think about this last bit about immigration on this year election, bearing in mind the Brexit results and for the Commonwealth, I mean, you know, it, the whole dynamics of, you know, I mean, when I first came to this country, I, I didn't know I could vote, even though I wasn't a British subject, <laughs> but I got the papers in and say, once you're of Commonwealth, you know, I was able to vote. Uh, I think like most Jamaicans, obviously, I think, um, you know, we're like more like Usain Bolt, yes. very fast, but sometimes we are late at the block, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know and sometimes uh, what happened is this, we have to, things have to stare us in the face before we act, yes. you know. We need to actually, um, like, again, obviously, campaign, you know. I mean, I think, obviously, MPs are not campaigning enough. We don't have, actually, have, um, the right representation in Parliament. We don't have enough, you know, people like us, obviously, I mean, um, mm. representing us, obviously, um, you know, we're well in, in powers. Mm. But I think people need to be more educated. That's actually, I mean, what they're voting for. Look at the manifesto mm. a bit. Um, we as immigrants, you know, yes. because we are immigrants in this country, we have to be aware that actually um, this election is about us and our children and our grandchildren. Yes. yes. Okay. It, it, Brexit is not about actually Europeans only, because the Europeans, I mean, oh, yeah, the, the Europeans um, to some extent, yes, yes, about the Europeans, mm -hmm. but also, I mean, um, who is next? You know, I mean, like I said, you know, yeah, a lot of immigrants are, you know, it's difficult you know, to, have, yeah. to give you get a child yes. from Jamaica. You know, if the child's actually, I mean, under 18, mm -hmm. it is so many different red tapes. It's difficult, difficult to come here and have visa's visa. Yes. It's difficult to get a spouse up. Obviously, you have a financial requirement, 18,600 mm -hmm. um, per annum. You have to earn before you can mm -hmm. actually get a spouse up. So um, what they're trying to do is to restrict um, the amount of immigrants coming mm -hmm. to the UK. So it's not only the European, it impacts mm -hmm. on all of us. I need to be aware of that. Yeah. But the most important thing out of this is that people need to be proactive in regards to political, uh, understanding the old political dimension as well, getting and out to vote and all those sort of things. And they need to lobby as well. They need, to, to, come to, they need to come together, obviously, yeah. as, as yeah. people, obviously, come together, yeah. obviously, and lobby, obviously, lobby, write to your MP, you know, yeah. uh, make telephone calls, you know, and, and, and lobby, and speak together, you know, and try to actually get information, try to actually, yeah. I mean, talk to people, get advice. I would say to people, go okay. and understand, so get advice, don't say ignorant. Okay, fantastic. Well, Vengers, listen, I want to thank you so much, but before yeah. we go, um, we always ask your guests to uh, give us a, a mantra or a quote or something that means a lot to them. So if you have a quote or something that you could want to share. I would say this obviously, I mean, um, information is a key. Mm. You know, information is key. I would say, please, you know, be educated, you know, um, 
be informed, you know, mm. know your right and entitlement and take it from there. That's a platform for success. Yes. Listen, I want to thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to the show. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining. But listen, it has been what, we, what I would say an educational show today. An educational show where we talk about immigration, talk about Brexit. But what is more important is listening to the words of Benjuris when he says in issues of deportation, that it's very important to behave. And also, there are actually strategies and information out there that persons can use and access in order to understand your rights, immigration, and also to be very wary also of lawyers which may not have the full information at hand and may not be fully knowledgeable. And that is something that you will also have to test. There are many ways one can get access to information. We also talk about Brexit, talking about the fact that Brexit is not just something that affects Europeans, but also the fact that Europeans also are involved with people from the Caribbean as well. So it's a very diverse issue. So ladies and gentlemen, watch the show. Thank you so much. And remember, like, subscribe, and share um, the show at Silburn TV, which is the hashtag. And thank you so much, and see you again next time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time. Hi, I'm Venture Senri. Solicitor, member of Green and Lawyers LLP. I've been on the Silburn Show. Please subscribe. The Silburn Show. <laughs>